pounds of gear on me with a bulletproof vest, camera, gun belt, and everything like that. I have about another 15 pounds of gear in my bike bag, um, which is miscellaneous ammunition, reports, ticket books, uh, that, of that nature. So my whole fear was, well, how fast is this bike really gonna go for me? Because it's so heavy. But uh, I learned quick. It goes fast. <laughs> uh, it gets up to speed really quick. And uh, this class three is no joke. It's 28 miles an hour. And I'm flying by, you know, when I, when I first got out there with a Z bike, there wasn't that many, really none. No, no e-bikes out there in August when I first started going out there in the downtown LA area. And uh, I was passing bike messengers who were just upset with me because I was passing them. You know, I'm blowing past cars. Um, so it's a fast bike. And uh, the, the great thing about it too is, and Sam touched on it here in his, in his uh, presentation here, is that I wasn't tired. In August, I don't know if you remember, back in August, it's over 100 degrees here. <coughs> you know, for pretty much every day it was getting over 100 degrees. So I just filled up my water bottle, I was going out, I was riding everywhere, and I wasn't tired. Like if I had been on my mechanical bike, I probably would have been about seven miles into it, sweating profusely, just, just done with the day in about an hour. I would have been back in the station in the air conditioning space. And that's one thing with these bikes a lot of people don't understand is that you are in the elements all day long, okay? Different than being in a police car in an air conditioning space uh, where you don't see officers get out of their cars too much and on a hot August summer day, right? Uh, we don't get that choice. We're out there. We're in the elements. Uh, now that winter's here, uh, we ride in the rain. This is a 365 day operation. And uh, I've been doing it for 18 of these years on a bike and uh, we don't stop just because the weather takes a turn or I mean, sure, you know, the good days are when it's 71 degrees all day long. That's a great day, you know, but we have been out there in the 110 degree weather. I've ridden in the rain uh, on this. It rained one, actually one time already on these bikes and they held up really well. Um, one of my bike officers was hit by a car yesterday over on Figueroa and 4th Street. Um, and luckily she stayed upright. The, the car came in on her and uh, damaged the entire bike rack here. Uh, but that's it. The front bumper of the car hit this and she didn't go down. When she got an applause, there were about eight bike messengers who started applauding her for not you know, falling on the ground. Which I was pretty impressed with, you know, that if you get hit over here, you figure it's like a pit maneuver, right? You're going to get hit on the back and it's going to take you off your bike. But she stayed on the bike and she's okay. Um, so the bike's just going to, we're just going to place the wrap. But that's it. I mean, it took, a, it took a little beating there, but, you know, it's a great bike. I, I'm just so proud that Sam, you know, went out with all his research. And I, he, we were talking to, the, you know, a couple of years and stuff like that. And I, I was telling Sam, this is what we need, this is what we need, and he hit it on the on the head with this bike. I had never heard of this company, Bulls, before Sam said, hey, we're getting these bikes from Bulls, and I said, well, top Port of France type of frame bikes, you know? And uh, when he when he brought this bike to me, and I was like, well, I've never heard of it, but I'll give it a try, Sam. He said it was a bunch of... <laughs> but I gave him the benefit of the doubt, you know, I, I, I mouthed off a little bit, you know, he's my superior, so I mouthed off a little bit, but I said, all right, Sam, I'll give it a try. And then uh, once I got on it, I was, and, th and this is what I tell everybody, this bike is a game changer. I mean, it's a game changer. I've already told the Los Angeles Fire Department, who I guess are going to start trying uh, e-bikes too, whether or not they go with a bull or, or something else, it, you know, that's on them, they have a different contract, but... Um, I, I can you imagine the first, like the fire department because they deploy what twelve? They have like twelve paramedics that these guys deploy on bikes, and they saw mine and I let them ride it. We were at a jazz festival down in Newton Division, and I let the captain, I let the other guys get on this bike and take this bike out for a ride, and they absolutely loved it. But um, it is it is night and day for first responders. Um, just from my experience, getting to calls faster. Uh, is you know than a mechanical bike obviously but i'm actually beating police cars there was a call when i was at central station that came out for a uh, attempt suicide in progress meaning somebody's trying to take their own life and it was at the la live area which is the staple center and uh, there were no units available it was a code three which means licensed sirens you have to get there as quickly as humanly possible but using you know <coughs> as safe as can be and it literally took me less than two minutes to get to the staple center which I probably would have been there at least four minutes ahead of a black and white police car. Just with the, the afternoon traffic, it was like five o'clock already, with the afternoon traffic and everything, and I was, and I explained this to somebody else too, and I said that, you know, when we're responding, we have lights and sirens. I don't know if you guys see them. I won't do the siren, but 
This is what the lights look like when they're on, so they're pretty bright. I don't want to blind anybody too long. And a siren. So imagine if I took my hand away from that, it's really, really loud. So we are able to respond code three on a bike. Lights and sirens and go through intersections and stuff like that. So, but I still got there safe. I, you know, got through the intersection and everything. I got there in less than two minutes. So uh, it's, it's quite a difference. It's quite a difference for first responders. I highly recommend it. It should be going out to every major city and everything like that. Yes? yes. Are you, are, are, do you have folks that are down in their, you know, that drive every day in their kind of you know, police car and they're saying, now that there's an e bike, I want to be part of the bike squad? I, I do have two officers yeah. that recently put in a notice to come to the bike unit because, um, well, when I was young, in my first days on the job, um, I hated being in a police car. I, I thought like Sam was talking about here, what people, some people, some officers said was, um, when you're in that police car, uh, people don't want to talk to you. It's like a cage, you're in there, and unless you get out of the car and actively engage in the community, people don't want to talk to you when you're sitting in that police car driving by at 35 miles an hour, unless they're waiting, unless somebody's flagging you down to report a crime, right? But this, no matter what, I have people come to me, whether good or bad, all day long. All day long people want to talk to me when I'm sitting on this bike. And so these two officers see that, and they said, plus, you know, now that we, we got the e-bike, and these two guys are pretty good in shape, too. They want to come to the bike unit now. But like Sergeant Humphrey said, uh, there are more divisions, especially commanding officers of those divisions, they see his stats, <coughs> and they see how productive the officers are, uh, and how much more community engagement that they have with these people. They are ramping up the bike units. Uh, when we first started with the bike unit, Almost every division had a bike unit in the city. Um, as time change and resources can, you know, take in for other, you know, other programs that are more important, uh, the first thing they took away were the bike units. Uh, it's the most they, cost of effective thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is, but, but when, when, you know, you have a gang situation yeah. and you have to deal with the gangs, you know, you have the internet crimes against children where, you know, you got a lot of crimes happening on the internet or resources are diverted to that. That was an easy fucking for you know the bean township. And plus, we could respond as fast as we can now. Yeah. So they see the response time was a big thing. Right. And also yeah. with traffic, with more yeah. traffic, especially in an urban type the, of environment. The the playing the playing field of cars versus yeah. the response of the cars <coughs> to the bike, e bike. You're now actually going to be faster on an e bike. Yeah. yeah. In, so in most yeah. So places. we see rejuvenation in, in bike patrol in the city, and that's because of e bikes. Question. Yeah, just wondering if you see any opportunity for like a hybrid solution of bike on the back of a police car and maybe two officers riding together and you use both the police car and the e-bike together. I, I you see must have that. been in Northeast Division, huh? <laughs> I see that not so much for only PD, but I see that for like a smaller city where they want, you know, cops in a car to respond to something. But you know, maybe half the shift, get on the bike, right around the parks, right around the community, to show that high visibility uh, patrol type thing. But for LAPD, these guys are full time bike cops. Now, unless they have to go to the West Side for a special event, now with a the bike, they just ride there. Whereas before, they would put a traditional bike on the back of their black and white and drive out to a special event. That's the only time you see cops having a bike is to go from point A to point B. Sergeant Helper can tell you that he has responded to special events two, three divisions away with e bikes and he was able to get there. Whereas before, that bike would have been on the truck or something. Yeah, we don't, we don't care now. Well, I, I will ride my guys to Hollywood. Uh, for Halloween, we had to work in Hollywood. I will ride my guys there and ride them back. It doesn't matter on these bikes. Yeah. Where, where, where before, I would have had to get a truck, load up all the bikes <coughs> in a truck, and then have another car. They're only using a truck and two police cars just to get all my guys over to uh, Hollywood. Now, I don't know. you're right. I think you made it back with just enough battery, I think, right? Oh, when I did my training, <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. When I did my training, right, I did that, yeah. So, yes. that was actually my question. I was, um, I was interested that you didn't name range as one of the limitations of the bike, so you think it's I don't have because I don't I haven't found a limitation to this bike yet. Um, we went on a I did a training ride purposely 
put all my guys and I don't know if you're familiar with this it comes in four different modes okay so there the, we I had them all go in the turbo mode okay. and I said I'm gonna take you someplace and you have to all leave it in turbo mode and I just want to see how far we can go the, regardless of whether you think the battery's gonna die or not leave it in turbo mode so the first thing we went is we went from Central Station which is over here in Skid Row area to Dodger Stadium okay so from Chinatown in, up to the top of Dodger Stadium, and I'm talking about where the players park, right. it took me less than two minutes in turbo mode to get all the way up there, which what I thought was pretty awesome. Because I've never, I usually work for Dodgers, and I've never ridden around that stadium so fast in my life. Because it's all a hill. So it was kind of neat to go up all the way up there. Then we rode all the way through Griffith Park, down to Legion Park, through Griffith Park, <coughs> all the way out to Bur uh, like Burbank, almost the Burbank border, and then came back up and around into the Echo Park area and then back. And we had done a total of about 40 miles, but it was all in turbo mode. And our batteries, and we just made it back to the station. But we were hauling, I mean, we were, there was no playing around. We were, and it was hot, and it was like, it must have been over 100 degrees that day. So we're dumping water on ourselves and it would actually weigh yourself down even more. But, uh, but the range, I, unless we're doing something like that, I wasn't really, because you can, you can play with it, I've learned, now that uh, I can go down to eco mode or tour mode, and especially when I'm doing traffic enforcement or I'm looking for narcotics activity, I don't want it in turbo mode right then and there because I, I don't want to go really fast because the, the bike will kick in a little bit, you know? And so if I'm really slow and I'm creeping and I'm looking for stuff, I'll go, you know, I want it in those slow modes so I can pedal the bike and control the brake uh, so I'm really, really slow. But if, if it's tra like straight traffic enforcement, where I think that if somebody's gonna run a red light and I wanna go catch up to them, it's gotta be in turbo mode. Yeah. The, the one last thing I'd like to touch on too, and it wasn't touched on at all, is crowd management and crowd control. Um, these days, uh, in the past few years now, you've been seeing a lot of bike officers involved in crowd management, which means that if the possible riot might take place, or a, crowd, a disturbance in a crowd, whether it be a World <coughs> Series, or a basketball champion, or whatever it may be, right? You're seeing a lot more bike officers get involved because the motorcycles were used to do it, but the problem is they started running over people and they started getting sued and stuff like that, and it's almost, it's just a conveyance running over somebody, you might lose the car, right? So they started getting away from that. So now we're using a lot more bikes. And um, this thing, and I always tell people, this thing was built like a tank, and that's what I like it. It's a great bike, it's, a, it's, a, it's great for community to come out and look at it and stuff like that, but if I need to use it to push a crowd back, it's a big, strong tank, and that's what we were looking for. Something that could be intimidating, yet at the same time, 10 minutes later, I can put a kid on the back here and you know tell the kid, hey, let's, let's walk around and stuff like that. But that's the kind of thing that you know we were looking for, and we got. We got out of this bike, so. And I have used this bike in, in the crowd management aspect of it already, so and it's, it's, a, it's a great tool.